Hello everyone, this is Orlando from A Collector's Dream. And today I'm gonna to go through my um, Adolfo Luque uh, cards. And I picked one up at the National, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna show that one. And then I'm gonna show some of the other cards that I have and talk, just talk a little bit about Adolfo Luque or what some people call, you know, his nickname was Dolph, Dolph Luque. And uh, you know, he was a starting pitcher in the major leagues and then started, he played from 1914 to 1935. One of the first Cubans to play in the major leagues. And you had uh, Rafael Armeda and Armando Marsans that also signed a little bit earlier and played uh, during that same era. And a lot of that was because the, uh, a lot of the American teams went and played winter ball down in, uh, in Cuba. And they saw him and another Cuban players and, and they, uh, you know, he was, he was eventually signed in 1914 and Marsans and Almeida were signed in 1912. But he spent uh, 12 years with the Cincinnati Reds. And he uh, was not only the first Latin American pitcher in, in the major leagues, but he also went on to uh, earn a, a World Series win in the uh, famous 1919 uh, Black Sox series. He, he pitched in that World Series. He was a, a relief pitcher. And he pitched two games in that uh, 1919 series. This is a 1922 E 120 American Caramel. Adolfo Luque in a four. And you can see it's just a beautiful card. And in the uh, the different leagues had different colors. This one kind of like a kind of like a bluish tint to it. But you can see that picture. That picture is used in many of the cards that you'll see. And uh but it's got that ornate border on it, and it's you know says Adolfo Luque picture for the Cincinnati Nationals, which are really the Reds. You can see it says the Reds on this shirt there, and the back has the whole team there, and you can see the back. At that time, this was 1922, so it tells you the teams that were there, I mean, all the players that were there in that during that team. And, um, and the manager. So, uh, you know, Luque he made his debut originally in Cuba. And, um, you know, in, in 1911, he played an exhibition game against the Philadelphia Phillies. And um, that's when they kind of saw him at first. And uh, he, uh, you know, he pitched eight innings in a game there, ended up with no decision on that. He then pitched another game against the Giants. And uh, again, these are all big major league teams. So um, they liked him and they ended up recruiting him. He was uh, seven and four with the Almendar's team and um, ended up with a 12 and five record that year overall. Then in 1917, he tied uh, for the league lead in wins with a, and also was also a great hitter. And he actually hit 355 average. So this is one of the Cuban cards of Adolfo Luque when he did play in this is the uh, the 26 27 Aguilitas and this is uh, kind of like a photo see that that's in the two kind of like a picture of him and you can see a picture and this is when he played with the Almendars you see it says an A on there with the Almendars club and uh, the other things with him is that, um, again, he, uh, he's a member of the Cuban Hall of Fame. He's a member of the, the Reds Hall of Fame. And uh, some of his uh, stats, he's also in, inducted in the, uh, yeah, the Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame in, in, the, in the Cuban Hall of Fame and the Mexican Hall of Fame. So just a little bit on his stats. Uh, you know, the year before this card came out, uh, this crate came out in 1922, so the year after, um, you know, he had uh, one of his uh, one of his best years there. And uh, let me see if I can find the stats on that. But uh, he was um, he was 27 and eight. I gotta go look up the stats. I'm not too good with this thing here, but um, here we go. See, okay, he was 27 and eight in 1923. I was just looking up the baseball stats to give you some some good numbers here. So in 1923, the year after this card came out, he went 27 and eight, 
uh, with a 1.93 ERA, and he won the ERA title. And he won two ERA titles in 1923 and in 1925. And uh, overall, he ended up winning 194 games and uh, played almost 20 years in, in the majors with, with the Reds and uh, the Giants and a, a few teams there. So the Alitas card, you can see it's from uh, Cigarros Seria Artistica, it means artistic series, Cigarros Aguilitas. And you can see this is card number 777. And these cards that Aguilitas had, not only baseball players, but a lot of, a lot of other subjects. So that is the uh, Adolfo Luque. And another one I want to show you from Adolfo Luque was, is the uh, 1928 uh, Yinglings. And this is again uh, from the ice cream, Yingling's ice cream, which you know is beer. But during 1928, they had to, they couldn't produce beer, so they made ice cream. And this is the Adolfo Luque, and very, very similar, almost same, same picture as the one you see in the other ones. But uh, that's kind of the shot they have on him. And you see the back of those, and it says, you know, that uh, if you have the Babe Ruth of this, you turn it back in and you end up uh, getting a, uh, a free ice cream novelty. And then if you save that, you could be saved for a quart of ice cream or up to a $5 scooter. So here he is again with the Reds in 1928. Now, oh, skip one there, 1927, same picture again as they've used in most of his, pretty much same shot. But this is a little bit of a rare version, and this is the, uh, the York Caramels. So this is a caramel card, not an ice cream card. And this is uh, in a two, and this is Adolfo Luque. And you see him again with uh, in the same picture, but just a different uh, card from 1922 all the way to 1928. You use that photo. And you can see in the back that this one is, it talks about him there. And even at this time, he was already considered the greatest of Cuban pitchers. And this is a set of 60 cards, and this is the Adolfo Luque. So as you can see, he was considered the greatest pitcher at that time, and he really was an incredible pitcher. I can give you a better look at all the cards here that I have here for now. I got a few more to show you there. But, um, you know, he also had over 1,100 strikeouts. Um, he, uh, you know, just really was an overall, you know, pretty dominant pitcher, you know, in, in his days. And uh, he ended up with a, um, his ERA, lifetime ERA was 3.24, 1130 strikeouts. And uh, he was a two-time World Series champion, uh, not just in 1919 he got, uh, he, during the Black Sox, but also he won a 1933 uh, World Series also. Uh, he was a major league leader in wins in 1923, a two-time major league ERA leader, like I talked about. And, um, you know, just, uh, you know, not just, he, he wasn't just a, um, a pitcher, but he was also a, uh, a very good manager. And uh, in 1920, he became a starting pitcher and primarily pitching with a curveball. He led the National League in, in losses also, but he also led it in wins the following year. And, um, he, you know, the thing with, with him is that um, when they went out to, to Cuba, and I'll show you, his, here's his 1928 uh, W513 hand cut. is and then uh, authentic. Because these cards are all blank back, you know, cut. So that's the uh, W513. And when they went out to Cuba, th there were so many good pitchers back in those days those days and good players overall that they really had to, they, they could take them because some of them, it depend on the color of the skin. If some had a little bit darker skin, then they maybe wouldn't bring him, bring them to the league. But if they had lighter skin, like uh, Luque did, you know, he was a prime candidate to, to bring to, to the States, you know, back, back in those days in the 1910s, 1920s. So, um, so Luque was one of the ones that was, uh, 
brought in. And uh, another one of his cards is from 1928, and this is another a Cuban issue, and this is the, uh, probably the smallest, let's see if I can fit these in here. Fit all these guys in the, in the picture. And this is again, this is gonna be the smallest card in my collection. And it's another Cuban issue card. And it's the 1930 Baguere chocolate, Adolfo Luque in a two. And you can see again, it's another, it's a tiny card, but you can see the photo of Luque and it does say, uh, it's got a little paper loss where the name is, but it's a really tiny, tiny card. I mean, you can see it's like the size of my finger, fingernail basically. And there's a good, better shot of it. And you can see Adolfo Luque there. It's like a photograph, so it chips very easily, tiny little photograph, and it came in a little chocolate. And you can see there, chocolate, baguere, el mas popular, the most popular chocolate in Cuba at the time. It's a little square, so they gave it, sold in little pieces, a little square, and then you had a piece of a candy, a chocolate, with the card. So that's the uh, 1930 Baguere chocolate of Adolfo Luque. So the thing with Adolfo Luque is that he was very, very fair skinned. And, um, you know, they said that, you know, again, he was also blue eyed, you know, uh, and a lot of uh, Cubans were, you know, my father had green eyes and my sisters, uh, my sister has also light eyes, both of them. But uh, it says as a blue eyed Cuban, blue eyed, fair skinned, white Cuban, he was one of several white Cubans to make it into the Major League Baseball at a time where non-whites were excluded. So between 1911 and 1929 alone, 17 Cuban-born Caucasian players played in the Major Leagues. Many of them, including Luque, also played in the Negro League Baseball with integrated teams from Cuba. So a lot of the, a lot of the in, in Cuba, they all played together, of course. So, you know, a lot of the players, uh, light, whitish players from Cuba went to play with the Negro League players, where the, uh, the Major League players did not. And, um, you know, he, uh, so he played, uh, you know, during that time, he played for the Cuban Stars, and he also played with the Long Beach, uh, Long Branch Cubans in 1913. And uh, again, he played, he was a, one of the guys that also was a, was a top coach and Luca was known to have a temper while with the Brooklyn Dodgers because he was a, uh, he played with the Dodgers also. A heckler in the stands hollered, Lucky Luke, Lucky Luke, repeatedly. Luke went over to the dugout and told manager Wilbert Robinson, I'll tell you, Rob, Robbie, if this guy don't shut up, I'm going to shut him up. Oh, come on, Dolph, said the manager. He paid his way in, let him boo. Just then, the heckler spotted the rotund Robinson and yelled, hey, fat belly. Robinson said, okay, Doff, go ahead and clobber the jerk. Luke obliged, obliged his manager's request. So he went over there and he beat the guy up. So he also served as a coach from 1936. So let me show you one, another one of his cards here. And this is 1933. So this is later in his career. This is the 33 Gaudi, although for Luke. And that gives you a really good look at him. You know, a light-skinned, blue-eyed Cuban that was, uh, that played in the majors, that was uh, really allowed to go out and go on and, and play, where some of the other players, you know, the, the black players like the uh, Jose Mendez and Martin De Higos and all these players were not allowed to, along with uh, Tor Torriente, one of the, the Beirut of Cuba also was not allowed to go. But anyway, that's, uh, it says the only, the only Cuban now playing in the National League, born in Havana in 1890, had his first major league trial in 1913 with the Boston Braves, failed to win a place, came back with Cincinnati in 1918, and remained with the team until traded to Brooklyn in 1930. Signed with the Giants in 32, Luke, a right-hander, 5'10", 172 pounds, best years 1923, won 27 games, and lost eight. Last year as a relief pitcher for the Giants, he won six and lost seven. This was towards the end of his career. So this is the Adolfo Luque, 1933 Gaudi card. And um, uh, since I'm showing that card, I also want to show that uh, one of the best uh,
players and um, again another uh, I played with him during that time uh, his contemporary Miguel Al Al Miguel Angel Miguel Gonzalez and this is Miguel L but it's uh, Miguel Gonzalez so Miguel Gonzalez uh, considered one of the best Cuban managers of all time and he managed in the Mexican League and he also played with uh, with Duque and this is the 20, 1928 Tharps of Miguel Gonzalez you know that uh, played with Duque so another one of the Cuban players that played in the majors during that era so anyway guys that's a uh, little bit about uh, Adolfo Luque you know he managed everywhere in the Me Mexican leagues and and all those places and um, you know, he's also uh, mentioned in uh, Ernest, Hem Ernest Hemingway's novel, The Old Man in the Sea. When uh, Hemingway writes, who's the greatest manager? Really? Luque or Mike Gonzalez? Uh, Luque died in 1957 and he's uh, buried in a uh, cemetery in Havana. So those are some of my Adolfo Luque, the latest, my latest pickup. So I wanted to share a little bit about him, a little bit about... Uh, uh, Cuban uh, baseball. So thanks for watching guys. Orlando from a collector's dream. Thank you so so much. Truly appreciate all your comments. You know, if you haven't liked to subscribe, you know, please do that. And if you have, I love all you guys. Thanks for doing that. Catch you on the next one. It's Orlando from a collector's dream. Have an awesome day.